it's still Christmas, second Christmas day, I snuck out at home, I can't deal anymore with the Christmas stuff and all of the chocolate and all of the sweet stuff. Just here in the studio really quick to work a little bit on music. To be more precise, working on the second song that I recorded with Ranky down below in the B studio with the vocal booth. Oh, oh, oh. Always one of the first things I do is actually editing the vocals because I hate it so much. It's very uncreative work but necessary work to make the vocals sound really good. They're the most important in most songs. And as you know, I already did plenty of tutorials all about vocal editing, how to make vocals shine, how to layer them, how to compress them, how to EQ them. I will link them up here. Today is more like a special vocal tutorial. Something a lot of people don't really talk about. First of all, like the plop sounds that you might end up having in your microphone. And even more important, how to deal with the breathing of the artist. Should you cut it away? Should you leave it in there? How to shape it? How to make sure it fits into the song? All of these kind of questions I want to answer because these kind of things I could never ever find online. <laughs> Have to stay, stay, stay. Let's start with the simple one, that's the pop sound. Every time you say a P, B, T, you get like a lot of air coming out of your mouth. You can test it when you talk and say P, B, T. You can feel it on your hand and this, this air pressure is also moving the membranes and the microphone and causes this pop sound. There's just too much air hitting the mic. One easy solution is to step a little back from the microphone, but when you're in your studio, you want to record as close as possible to catch up every nuance of the singer. And the only way to get rid of it before actually recording is using a pop filter. I got one here out of metal. You put it right in front of the microphone as close as possible. And this eliminates everything. It kind of reduces the air coming out of your mouth. It also reduces a tiny, tiny bit some frequencies. So you might have to boost them and post, but it's easier to EQ and post and trying to get rid of the pops. So pop filter is a must. If you see in any music video, someone singing into a mic without a pop filter, you know, it's just fake. No one would ever, ever record like this. And then there are the ones out of fabric. They're usually a tiny bit cheaper, but you can get these for like five, 10, 15 euros. I, I will link them down below if I can't find them anywhere. But let's actually test it really quick. I will just use the mic on top of the camera. It kind of already comes with a pop filter. This foam thing is also reducing pops. So let's get rid of it really quick. <laughs> so one test without the pop filter, Peter Parker pop Popeye. Peter Parker pop Popeye. Peter Parker pop Popeye. Let's switch it to the fabric one. Peter Parker pop Popeye. Peter Parker pop Popeye. I think the one with the fabric is better. Cause if I do like really a lot of air, P, 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 and with the metal one, P, P, I can hear the air pushing through, through the metal. A little bit disappointed. This one looks cooler and it doesn't break. You don't have to replace it. They're also a little bit more expensive, but sound wise, I'd say the cheap fabric one wins. Now let's say you were just really, really stupid and didn't use a pop filter. Never ever do that. But just in case you forgot your pop filter and recorded something, I would then still advise to just leave a little bit more room between you and the mic. But if you really have a recording with um, pop sounds in it and you want to get rid of it, it's really hard to accomplish. I only know one piece of software that tries it and also gets something accomplished way more than doing it manually with the cueing and, and, and just trying to kind of EQ the, the pop sounds out of it. It's by a company called, let me check really quick, Akusonos and they have a bunch of small plugins. They have a de-esser noise remover, which I use on every single video that I actually make just to get rid of the, the noise floor that the shitty preamps of the cameras actually have. They have a reverb remover that I also sometimes use, a voice leveler that is basically doing compression and getting everything onto one loudness. And they have the plosive remover. That's the one we will need. All of these plugins basically have one big knob. You just dial up from 0% to 100 
whatever you need. The more you dial it up, the more it will um, change the sound, so be careful. But it does it in a way where it's not entirely destroying it. I know other plugins which just destroying everything. These do it actually in a decent way, so let's try it. I mean, it's it's really hard to get rid of these pops, so without the plugin, Peter Parker Pop Popeye. You can definitely hear the, the, the pops, and now with the plugin, Peter Parker Pop Popeye. Again, Peter Parker Pop Popeye. Peter Parker Pop Popeye. Yes, it's making the voice thin. You could now try and EQ some frequencies back in there. It's definitely cutting those pop sounds. And that's basically the maximum you can do in, in post-processing. Really, really just use a pop filter. And then for, for the breathing, it depends on a lot of factors. Let's say your singer is really talented and well-trained. They will breathe in a way where it sounds actually really good. It will be like an upbeat, like a small introduction sound to the vocal that is following. If you do acoustic music, you need a singer that is capable of doing that 100% right, because in that kind of music you want the breathing to stay in there, to make it sound natural. In pop, electronic dance music, hip-hop, I would also leave the breathing in there, but I would start to really control it, because when you compress the vocal, it's basically making the quiet parts loud, so the breathing that is actually quiet might end up being really loud and distracting, and then you have to dial it down again. You either go in there, volume automate every single breathe down by a couple of dB. Sometimes that's the only option you have. Or you can, for example, use Nectar. I think Nectar 2 has it built in, like a small slider that says breathe. And if you pull it down, it will reduce the breathing. I don't know why Nectar 3 doesn't have that anymore in there. It was actually quite handy because sometimes, like in 50% of the cases, you could just use that one function and it would do it for you and you won't have to go in there and do it manually, which can take up quite some time. And then you have the cases, and I would only do it if, if the breathing is really, really bad, if it's like not in rhythm or if you do like two takes and you can still hear the breathing at the end and at the beginning of the next part and it overlap. So never ever have two breaths overlap or being like mixed together. It sounds really, really awkward just cut them away. I mean, if, if the breathing doesn't sound good, just get rid of it. If the instrumental is anyways very busy, you won't hear them anyways. It's more like for quiet parts, acoustic parts. There, I would leave it in there if it sounds good. If it doesn't sound good, if the singer isn't well trained, just get rid of it. Luckily here in this case with Frankie, the breathing is good. She's well trained. She knows how to sing, how to breathe. <laughs> Again, we be running like waters. It feels like we're one with the crowd. Inside, all the chaos is peaceful. It sounds very natural. It doesn't distract you. But now if you start compressing it and you need to compress vocals quite a lot. I've now just for the demonstration heavily compressed it and you will hear the breathing is really being pushed and as loud as the singing. <laughs> Again, we be running like waters. It feels like we're one with. And then again, the easy solution is using Nectar, but Nectar 2, I, I really don't get why it's not implemented in Nectar 3. I, I really don't get it. So, Nectar 2. I actually just checked, it's also not in Nectar 2, it's I think actually Nectar 1, but yes. Nectar 1 has the breathe still in there, Nectar 2 and 3 don't have it. I don't I don't know why they removed it. But yeah, you just activate it. Let me just get rid of the rest. It's really nice because you can set it to infinite. Again, we be running like waters. It feels like we're one with the crowd. Inside all the chaos is peaceful. No matter what's happening. Saves a ton of time. I don't know why they got rid of it in the newer versions, but let's maybe dial to minus 22 dB to have like a natural breathing still in there. Again, we be running. Again, we be running like waters. It feels like we're one with the crowd. 
inside all the cage. This way you can really shape and control the loudness between the actual vocal and the breathing. It's really important to control it, make it sound natural, think about it, make it sound professional. If it's more quiet part, definitely try and leave the breathing in. If it's like the main drop and you anyways just chop up the vocals, get rid of the breathing. The more it goes into a classic acoustic kind of style where you just want it to sound natural, like someone is standing right next to you and singing, leave it in there and actually get someone that can perform that. Like breathing uh, is very underestimated, but that's usually how you know you have someone singing for you that is like really trained and professional. So anyways, I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Let me know down below in the comments how you deal with breathing. If you ever thought about it and just leave it in there. Or if it's something you consciously go in and, and edit and, and make sure that it sounds right. Tomorrow we will see us back here in the studio 100%. Christmas is then finally over and we can finally go back to working 24-7. You don't have to stay, stay, stay